Hey there. Did you know that if you have an unencrypted Windows 10 or 11 device, you can just bypass a password with a bootable USB? This is actually pretty simple to do too. Anyone really tech savvy watching this may recognize it as a boot to root technique. And in this video, I'll show you how it can be done. A big disclaimer, this method will only work if the computer is not encrypted. There are a few tools that we need to get started. Of course, we need the computer that we want to reset the password on, but we also need a second computer and we'll use this one to make the bootable USB. In my case, it'll be a second laptop running Windows 11. We need a flash drive that is eight gigabytes or more. Then we need the Kali Live image, which we can pull directly from their main website. As always, you don't need to use Kali, but it's convenient. Importantly, we will use a utility called CHNTPW. I'm just gonna call that change NT password from now on, but luckily this utility does come pre-installed with Kali Linux. And lastly, we need Rufus.exe, and we'll use this to format the USB. Okay, let's get started, and let's check if the device is encrypted. A quick way to do this is to try and open command prompt from the Windows Recovery Options. To do this, hold down the Shift key, and while holding it down, restart the computer. I'd recommend that you just hold down the Shift key until the blue screen pops up. Then go to Troubleshoot, Advanced Options, Command Prompt. If you were taken to a command prompt screen, then that means that your device was not encrypted. But if you instead see a page similar to the one that I have on screen now, asking for a key, your device is encrypted and nothing else in this demo will work. If your device wasn't encrypted, that means that we can go ahead and move on to uh, modify some BIOS settings. Close out command prompt, hit troubleshoot again, advanced options, UEFI settings, then restart the computer. So at this point, a screen should pop up, giving you some options. Take note of which key is for what, we really only care about the boot menu and BIOS setup ones. For me, that would be F9 and F10. Yours might have slightly different names. I'll hit F10 and go to BIOS setup. Now that I'm here, keep in mind that BIOS setting pages can look very different based on motherboard manufacturer. But the settings, the settings and their names should be pretty similar. For me, I go to system configuration, boot options, and then make sure USB boot is enabled, and then make sure secure boot is disabled. Changing secure boot allows the default Kali Live to run. Next, I will hit F10 to save and exit. You might see another screen pop up, but if you do, just enter the code on screen and hit enter. This should take us back to the Windows login page. Next up, let's go back to our second computer and we'll make that Kali Live USB. So go to the official Kali site and download the live boot image. You can just stick with the recommended version. Next, download Rufus from their official site, and I'll just grab the latest standard 64-bit version. Now we should have everything to make that live USB, so make sure your flash drive is plugged in, then open Rufus. Once there, choose your flash drive as the device, and then change the boot selection option to the Kali ISO that you just downloaded. Once you're done with that, just hit start. This may take a bit to run based on your hardware. Once that is done, grab your flash drive and plug it into your lock computer. Now, the lock computer needs to be fully shut down. Things like fast boot will cause issues later on, but to bypass that is pretty easy. Hold the shift key down again, and then just turn the computer off from the GUI. Don't let go of the shift key until the computer is all the way off. Next step is boot into the Kali USB. Now, earlier I said to take note of whatever F key is for boot options. For me, that was F9, so I'll turn the computer on and then immediately start hitting F9 which should bring me to boot options eventually. Feel free to keep mashing F9 as you're turning it on. Once there, just choose the Kali option. It probably won't verbatim say Kali, but it'll say something like flash drive, most likely. If we've done everything right so far, we should see the Kali Live menu. You can just leave it as the default boot option, then hit enter. Give it a moment, and we should boot right in the Kali. Next, mount the Windows drive. We'll do this the lazy way and just double click on the Windows drive's icon on the desktop. Now we can set up our password bypass using that change NT password tool. I feel this next part needs some context. The tool allows us to bypass passwords by modifying existing user accounts. And to modify those accounts, it needs access to something called the SAM file from the Windows disk. To keep it kind of short, Windows stores user account information inside of the SAM file. And one of the things that it stores is NTLM password hashes for any local user account. Usually this file is protected but since we've essentially siloed the Windows drive into an operating system where we have full permissions, we can modify it freely. So change NT password will let us assign a blank password to a local user and or enable existing user accounts. The other part of this that I should probably explain is the difference between local and online user accounts. Local accounts are entirely created and managed on a single device. Change NT password can modify these kinds of accounts directly. 
On the other hand, we have online accounts which are connected to a Microsoft login. Typically, these kinds of accounts are made when a user provided a Microsoft account when first sitting at the computer. But Change NT Password can't modify these accounts directly. However, every Windows device will have a default local user account called Administrator. But usually that default account is disabled by default. But we can use Change NT Password to enable the default Administrator account and blank out his password. This will let us get inside of the computer using that default Administrator account and bypass the existing user account entirely. Since we'll be logged in with admin privileges, we can then make a new local user account or even set up a new online account if we wanted to. To save some time, my target computer has both a local and online account running, so I'll be going through the bypass process for both types at the same time. Okay, first step for either kind of account, we will copy down our Windows hard drive path from the top. Next, we will open our terminal window. We can just type in chntpw to see our tools options. But next, we can type out sudo change nt password dash i and then the path or sam file. So first would be the hard drive's path that we just copied down, and then add on Windows system thirty two config sam and remember that linux is case sensitive when we run the command we'll get a menu hit one to edit users these should be all the user accounts listed in our computer sam file just for awareness in the demo byte s is my online account and tester one is my local account i'll start with my local user account called tester one first i just give it the rid that corresponds to this user then i put one to clear the password and if you only had a local user account you're done here but I'll move on to online accounts. So I'll just go back to the main user edit screen to see all the users. Now I know that I can't directly edit the online account's password using change NT password. So what I'll do is enable that default admin account, put in that account's RID, put two to unlock it, and then put one to ensure that the password is blank. Next, just quit out of change NT password and make sure that it says Hive was written when you save it. If it failed, it'll probably say something like Hive not written, and usually what causes these errors is if you didn't do a full hard shutdown like I showed earlier. Now both of my account types have been reset, so I'll just shut down Kali, then pull the flash drive out, then turn it back on and load to Windows. Once Windows loads, it might immediately log you in as someone, but if not, you should see your options on the left side. If everything worked, I can choose my local user account and it should immediately take me to the desktop. Now, if I had an online account and enable the default administrator account, I should see the admin user added to the left side. And if I select that account, it'll be signed in automatically. And it might take a minute or so since it's technically the first time this user's logged in, but I'll be brought to the desktop. I'm switching back over to one of my local accounts. Now, if you had reset the password for a local account, you should now set a new password. You can do this through the GUI, but an easy way to do it is to just search for command prompt, then open command prompt as administrator. Once there, just type net user, and then the username, followed by an asterisk. Put the password in, and then the password is set. By this point, if you only had a local account to begin with, you're done. But if you had an online account and are currently signed in as administrator, I'd recommend making a new local user account. So I'll switch over to administrator, and make sure that you have a command prompt window open and is running as administrator. Then type out net user slash add, and then the name of your new user. It can be whatever you want. I'll just put tester2, then follow that with an asterisk run that and set the password. To double check that our new account was made, we can just run net users and then we should see that new account in the output. Next, our new local user needs to be in the administrators group. So in command prompt, type net local group administrators, note that is plural, and then the new username of our account followed by a slash add. We should see successful and just to verify, I will run net local group administrators and I should see that that new account's there. Next, sign out, then sign back in as that new user. So good practice is to not leave that default administrator account enabled. So open command prompt again, run it as administrator, then run net user administrator active no. And if I restart the computer, I can see that the default administrator account is no longer listed on the login screen. This last part will touch on basic cleanup items you should probably consider. We did change BIOS settings, so USB boot, secure boot. I'm not gonna show it on camera, but I would recommend putting that back the way you found it. But after that, if you started with just a local account, there's really nothing else that you need to do, so that's it. But if you started with an online account, there's a few more possible steps to take. One, we are signed in as a new user. We never actually reset that other online account's password. So all the files for that user will be in their directory. So we could transfer any documents from that old user account to our new user account, and then delete the old ones if we wanted to. After that, we could just delete that old online account entirely. And if we wanted, we could even sign back in with a Microsoft account. One of the most common errors that I ran into when doing this testing 
was that it would say I don't have permission to edit the SAM file. If it does say that, make sure you did a hard shutdown by holding the shift key when turning your computer off. And if change ND password says that a user account password is already blank, but then and ask for a password once you try to log in, it was probably an online account and you need to go through these steps for those specifically. Well, I think that's it for this video. Hopefully you learned something.